to the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Today we have actually uh, two uh, events, two important events. One of them is today is the very first Sunday of the month of Qiyah. And the month of Qiyah is the month of the incarnation, the month of praises, uh, the month uh, we are waiting for uh, the, the life of Christ himself to come upon us and to be present and incarnate in us. But today also is a very uh, special feast, the feast of the presentation of uh, the, the uh, uh, St. Mary to the temple. When uh, her parents, as you know that her parents were barren, they didn't have children, and they promised God that if they get a child, they will give up the child to God. And they, uh, God gave them St. Mary, and uh, at the, when she turned three, uh, at, as the custom, they went to the temple and they presented St. Mary, they gave her a gift to the temple. That's actually a very important feast. I saw a connection between the gospel today and that feast, because both of them were talking about barren people, يعني ناس مش بتخلف, barren people, and then God gave them not any life, but a very, very, very special life. Whether the life of John the Baptist, as we read today, or the life of St. Mary. And both of them uh, are uh, uh, the people who uh, um, had very, very, very important role in the first coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. St. Mary, who uh, bore the Lord himself, and John the Baptist who went before him and prepared the way for him. And I think it happened a lot like the mother of Samuel, also uh, the, the, the parents of uh, uh, Samson, people who were barren and they are righteous, they're good people, they're, they're waiting for God and nothing is happening. And God is not blessing them according to the blessing of the Old Testament, which was children, or giving them life, yani. Righteous people, following God, obeying His commandments, patient for so many years, but they are barren. And then God bring life to them after all this patience but the one common denominator between all of them that they continued to be patient and they continued to be righteous continued to follow God despite that they were barren and at the fullness of time the life come from above and this life will change everything. This month, the month of Kiyak, is a wave of life coming from above. To put life in, in the death of the barrenness and to bring uh, hope out of the hopeless situation. Zechariah, even though he was a priest, he knew the story of Abraham that he was very, very old and had, had children, and he was righteous before God, the angel appeared before him. The angel appeared to him and said, you will have a child. Said, How? Barren. It's dead. Everything inside of us is dead. How can we have children? How can we have fruit after all these years? I see a lot of time uh, people who have heart for God, for serving Him, for bringing fruit to His kingdom, but they are barren for years. What did we do wrong, Lord? What went wrong? What are we waiting for? What's going to happen that will change the situation? And uh, sometimes the situation becomes very, very, very hard, very complicated, that it's no longer that I need healing. No, now I, I need, you know, resurrection from the dead because khalas, it's dead. The, 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 the bowels inside are dead. Can they bring forth fruit? 
amazing. Nothing can bring that except the life of Christ himself who came to be the source of life in us and the source of hope. Not any hope. Not the hope of good news. Not the hope of everything will be okay. No, he didn't give that. But he gave his own life, life from above, the life of Christ. He did not give them children. He didn't give uh, 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 Joachim and Anna a child. He didn't give uh, uh, Elizabeth and Zechariah a child. Good. Have fun. You have a baby. Play with him. No. New life that come from above. Life that, that, that is not from this world. Life that, is, that is, does not exist in these days. But it comes out of this death. A lot of time, the, the, the time of being barren and the time of death is actually very necessary to show us that this is who we are. This is our nature. This is Adam and Eve. We have inherited death as we pray in the liturgy. Death that came into the world through the envy of the devil. When Adam and, and Eve fell, they received death. The punishment was death. Not death that they die in the end of life, but everything in them is, is dead. Everything in them is earthly. Everything in them is down. They have no life in them. They have no hope in them. Nothing is positive in our nature. A lot of times we try to serve with our nature. And we give God the death we have. And God says, I don't need that. That's not going to help. And Abraham, who was dead also inside, or before he was becoming dead, he, he said, let me offer God something. Let me get Ishmael. Let me try to do something on my own. Let me give God something that I don't become barren. And at the same time, you know, I, I have fruit. Human efforts. Human service. And, 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 and human work. But God said, no, I will allow you to have a time of being barren. To know this is earth. This is us. This is our nature. Accept that. Embrace that. No life will come from our nature, from our life, unless the life of Christ himself. A lot of times we have a, a, a bad situation and we're hoping God to send help. And we like the help. Good. Things are complicated and there is help. A big problem and God sends solutions. Good. And we like it and we thank God, we praise God and God is good. But that's not what God likes to do. That's not the time of incarnation. The time of incarnation, accept the death of human nature. Accept the barrenness and say, this is who we are. Nothing good can come from us or from around us. We need the life from above. We need the life of nothing less than the life of Christ himself. The life of Christ that put life to death. That's why St. Paul says, No longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. He doesn't want the barren people to get nice, cute children. But he wants the children to be the children of the promise, the children of God, that have the life of God himself and bring his life down. That will help the righteous barren to accept his barrenness, to accept his death. No, Lord, for so long I haven't been fruitful. For so long, wanted to serve you, wanted to give you something, wanted to be a, a, a source of blessing, to do anything in this life, but I couldn't. I can try 
lot of times people come around this time, I haven't done anything for God. Let me give to the poor. Great, nice. Let me uh, uh, help some people. Wonderful. And that I pretend that I'm not, I'm no longer barren. The reality is, no, I am barren because I haven't given life to others, not any life, the life of Christ. So the time of incarnation is the hope of receiving the life from above. Lord, I don't want any life. I don't want any fruit. I want the life, your life, the life from above. Not to be a good person, but to be Christ-like. Not to be a fruitful person, but to give birth to many children in the Spirit through your life coming in us. Let's accept the barrenness and let's wait patiently and let's wait for no earthly hope or solution but for the life of Christ himself to give us what's heavenly, what's from above and, uh, and, and, and when he gives us, he gives us something not to bring uh, just light but to bring the light of Christ and to prepare the way for him. And as John the Baptist, that we read the gospel about him today, and as St. Mary, that was presented to the temple today after years of barrenness, uh, wear the light to prepare the way for his first coming. May God give us fruit out of the womb to prepare the way for his second coming. Glory be to God forever and ever. Amen.